In VCD Tokyo, we had a lot of storylines, like evil geniuses Cinderella run to the finals, Fnatic's quest to be the best in the world in start and era, but a storyline that is overlooked by far is America's quest to be the best region on Pearl, with a 13 to 0 win and loss ratio on the map versus international competition since the map was released. So in this video I want to break down energy versus T1 and show you guys how energy almost ruined the perfect score on Pearl. We have to start with agent selection, like we always do. The agent selection tells us how the team will play the map. Well, that was not fun. Both teams are going into this map with the same agent. Make this game kinda boring, but it makes sense. You will have a viper for default setups related rounds. While using sky flashes and jet as entry material, both teams have an interesting way of playing the pistol round. Victor and mid uses his turret to just control mid. Mid is a key area of pearl since he controls so many rotations and instead of investing a player there, the killjoy turret is a better option. As well as finesse, set up a great viper wall on B that block out all of this and then lurks waiting for a push. The rest of energy are going A, with our early sky flash to peek around the corner just to be safe. T1 on the other hand are going 3 players long with this viper wall. This wall allows T1 to pull off a full long take and push without being spotted by energy and have gone for this orb to force energy to wait out to take long. It's as well a great way to counter the viper utility from energy on long. Then they have viper in mid and killjoy have a setup alone on A site. Energy uses this utility and the jet dash to take site. And I love the way jet is taking this, using the smokes to get onto site without being spotted and then runs with the harbor wall. Knife out to take full site control. Artist with a great thing to killjoy and the site had been taken. Like look at the map. Harbor single-handedly took the whole site. But energy is not done, seeing that playing a hold type of setup is not good in the post-plant 5v5, since you can only play from these positions, so energy have opted to have this 3-man player push backside towards spawn to box in T1 forcing them to push into unwinnable fights, and it works out perfect. Beautiful work, saving his two teammates who'd pushed a little deeper towards CT. So what can Munchkin and Zeta achieve? The cast records for personality change from T1. To see a little bit of a personality change here from T1. Or a new setup, since so far Energy's A take have been impossible for T1 to play against, losing the first three rounds so far. So now T1 will change. Energy have set up like they always do in this default with Killjoy mid, Viper lurking and the rest going A. T1 on the other side have changed up and are going 3 agents A stairs ready to push. But stop, look at what agents they have sent in. It's just not 3 randoms agent with the best spawn or whoever got the idea of this. They are using Sky to flash for info and allowing them an early peek. Harbor to cut out some fights and making fights more likely to be 1v1 rather than 1v2s. And last part of the push is Jet who will push and use this dash to get away if needed as well as smoking right here. And this might look dumb, but if you've seen how energy was throwing the sky flash, you will see that this smoke is used to catch it, so it flashes inside the smoke. And this forces energy to rotate, but look at the map. While energy is rotating, T1's players on B have started to do the same, but they can do it as long as Killjoy is in the range of her abilities, since they are enough to keep energy long enough out of sight for T1's rotations to come in. When the execute comes, T1 have one player back holes with an Odin, Two players coming from spawn and one player in middle, but Jet is nowhere to be found. Will this be a problem? Energy Viper pits the mid player. This forces the mid player to stay mid and hold if anyone crosses towards site, but he can't peek out on site and help his teammates. And that's why Artis smokes here, to block the vision so he can take the fights in middle of the site. And then Energy hits T1 with this wall and it's perfect. In quick succession, a 5v5 turns into a 3v1 and Jet have to save. Energy have gotten to a flying start with a 7 to nothing lead. And this have hurt T1 in many ways. The first is morale. So far, T1 have tried much new stuff to win rounds and nothing have worked. The other is the economy. T1 in this round have two vandals, one bulldog, one sheriff and one stinger. While energy have a full buy and soon maxing out their money. 
the perfect start. T1 sets up with Jet middle, Killjoy alone on B, Viper playing rotations and the two last players being on A, trying to hold off energy. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And energy, yet again, are back to their default setup and uses this ability to try and force T1 out to a more passive position. T1 meets this with an aggressive sky flash and we have a standoff on A main. None of the teams want to be the first to peek and both are waiting for the rotation slash lurks. In middle, Victor with a great read understands that he should not push middle since his teammate have stopped up so he will now be pushed. And he falls back and as soon as T1 takes mid, he's away. Insane timing. But Energy now have gotten info that there are some mid present from T1 and goes for the A-Tech with these abilities and T1 tries to meet this with their own harbor wall but it's just too late and Ardis is out on sight and quick. T1 are in no place to try and even hold this push, so saving the harbor wave would probably have been better. Finesse uses his ult and this should be a free win, right? Well, energy are confident, and that makes sense. But this time, it bites them in the ass. With Artis dying and Crashy going for a very aggressive push for no reason, to not find anything at all other than some damage, dangerous to do when you have no control and losing a teammate. Stop, look where energy plays this. You're using shorties to fight in the pit. Yes, it makes sense, but why not use your vandals and play long range instead? Carpe enters into the pit and hits a great sheriff shot and energy just falls flat and loses the first round. I want to ask this and please tell me in the comment sections. Why use the shorties here and not play some better angles with vandals as such? I know it's like shotguns and a viper pit makes them low, but at the same time you only have two shots. FNS misses the snake bites and gets run down. T1 takes the first round. It's 7-4. T1 have gotten this game back. As fast as Deadlock kills an enemy using their ult. But T1 are not stopping here, pulling out the operator on Saya. And here we just have to watch. Look how aggressive he goes. And let me point this out. If he dies, it's only harbor left with rotation so far away. Crazy move to do when you have so much risk in the pictures. But what a flick and he opens up the round. Energy loses Sky the second worst player to lose early. Worst one would have been Harbor. Now Energy have no flashes to get out of sight, something they have been relying on for the whole match after the Harbor abilities were used. So how do Energy do this? Artist pulls the knife out to get a cheeky sight kill, an amazing position if you ask me, but T1 is too good to allow this. And they sit back and wait and Artist can't see anything. But this is information as well, with Artist now telling his teammate no one are here. And this tells Energy of the setup by T1 is either very close or very far back on sight. FNS on B gets tagged up and he had to get this kill. But Energy still decides B is the spot and Artis goes for the lurk. And he have to be fast. And T1 are all rotating over since Saya have gotten so much map control. But here the trades on site starts good for Energy with the first kill. Then the rest can't get anything done since they're missing sky flashes to get out. Insane how that opening kill snowballed to lose Energy the last round of the half. And Artis left alive can't win this. Right, the spoils here and ban the man of the hour who started to come alive for T1 has made it to the site. The spike goes down, and the last player standing will be Artis. A 1v4 for him. 19 seconds of hope in hell. 5 to 7. Energy have started to get a grip on the match with finally reaching double digit. But let's focus in on the buy. T1 have gotten a full buy, while well, Energy as well have gotten a full buy, but Artis have gone for the judge. The reason for this is that he can play his knives for long range, and if he have to run out and get an opening, the judge is perfect, since Harbor uses his abilities to take close range map control and kind of boxing in his own teammate, like we have seen Energy do. And then the judge is perfect. T1 have gotten 3 ults ready, while Energy only have 2, but Viper is 1 point away. These ults tells us that T1 will use a Sky ult for early info and then Killjoy to secure sight. Let's see. But we have changed sides and I want to look at the setup. T1 are not focusing mid like Energy did with Killjoy. They would rather have the Killjoy turret behind them on A main to focus the flank than Viper to lurk in mid and be the mid defender. The Energy side had Viper as a B long lurker so it's a nice change to see since this allows Viper to be more in the game and faster rotation if needed. Energy are going for the cage setup on B while Harbor and Sky are doing more aggressive setup in A main and Artis to hold art. While Viper is holding in mid, holding for lurkers, helping Jet and can rotate fast. T1 takes much space on A and then just leaves it. Why? Well, T1 creates space allowing Killjoy to stay behind and catch Energy off guard when they have to retake it. 
and Kidra can hold this alone since the turret tells her if anyone comes behind. So the position is great, while the rest of T1 wants to link up with the lurker before picking what side to execute. Kildre ults in A main, and this allows the mid players from T1 to either take art or wait for art player to move. T1 takes art and artist is out. Fun fact, this Kildre ult ruined artist's plan to play close art or mid, since the Kildre ult would have forced him away. Perfect play by T1. And then using the Sky ult to see where 3 out of 4 players from NRG are coming from. But the NRG are not giving up. Kildre ults to force T1 to play a more laid back hold, and as I said earlier, a 5v4 and deciding to play a laid back hold is bad business, and NRG and T1 knows this. Jet gets locked out due to the Kildre ult, but uses a great smoke to get safely before FNS peaks. Carpe holds it perfect, and this kill is the first domino to fall for NRG and he loses the round. So far, T1 have looked like night and day from the first 7 rounds to the last 7 rounds. And the score is 11 12 for NRG. Can NRG bring it over the line, the last step? Well, so far, NRG artists have been missing a lot of shots and crucial ones as well. So he's not feeling it. But here's the difference between you and a player that is a pro. Even though you feel it or not, you still have to go for these plays, since the role and setup your team and you have in the start of the round and strats will rely on you hitting your shots. NG is set up with two players on B long, with Artist Operator and Killjoy Utility, then Viper in mid and the last two players on A. T1 are yet again going for two players B long and three players towards A main. T1 have one ult on Sky, while NRG have an ult on Killjoy. A much better ult for the retake. But stop, freeze the map, analyze. T1 are playing super passive. And this is good when the enemy walks into your crossers, but with no mid presence, energy are just taking it with four players, and then you can see why some did all of these utilities in the start. To fake a A main take as well as block visions on A site for T1 to allow them to go middle. Ban have had a great game so far, being a beacon of hope in this comeback for T1, but when it matters, he have the whiff of his career and does this, and energy finds two kills for one. T1 stalls a little before deciding to go B, and here the whole arsenal awaits them, and now it's time for the Killjoy ult and Ardis to shine. Ardis is an amazing flick on the jumping jet, and then a great harbor smoke on the bomb to allow the defuse safely to happen. Set have to use an early snake bite to get him off, and this is perfect for energy, and energy wins the round. That defuse for a second. A 3v2 though, Munchkin and Zayz are still desperately trying to pressure this. NRG now standing in numbers. Another tap on the spike. Som takes down Zeta. It's all on Munchkin. He tried his best. The win rate is insane on Pearl for the American regions. But if you want to see how America lost their first match on Pearl, ask in the comments and I'll make one. Thanks for watching.